From the National Newsroom of the Canadian Press, I'm Rob Westgate. For a second day now, thousands of Canadians may have to change their travel plans. Bewildered commuters were turned away from shuttered rail lines yesterday following a countrywide rail lockout that shut down the lines in major metropolitan areas. Now today, the agency responsible for Go Transit in Ontario says the service will remain down on the Milton Line and at the Hamilton Go Station. CN and CPKC locked out workers after they failed to reach a deal on a new contract before a midnight deadline that was Thursday, but all three parties have since been ordered into binding arbitration. Kamala Harris is officially the first black and South Asian woman to lead a major party ticket after formally accepting the Democratic Party's nomination last night. The history-making final night of the convention saw Kamala Harris give her keynote speech in front of a sea of supporters dressed in suffragette white. It symbolizes when American women secured the right to vote in 1920. If elected, she would become the first female U.S. president. Satin Arnett from Washington State says the moment of opportunity was palpable. A chance of a lifetime, we're making history. I never thought that I would see this in my life. Harris herself has largely stayed away from leaning into her identity, instead talking with authority about issues such as reproductive rights and equality for all. Kelly Malone, the Canadian Press, Chicago. A Montreal civil rights organization is warning that some participants of a Quebec program to recruit and train nurses from overseas are finding themselves in dire straits. In particular, the Centre for Research Action on Race Relations says several nurses from West Africa say they've been left destitute after getting expelled from the training program for failing one part of it. The group is calling for the Quebec Human Rights Commission and the provincial government to investigate the program. Over to the East Coast now, where health officials in New Brunswick are declaring a province-wide outbreak of whooping cough. They say there have been a higher number of cases than usual in multiple parts of the province. So far, the Department of Health says 141 cases have been reported this year, well exceeding the annual average of 34. Whooping cough is a contagious, vaccine-preventable disease that can occur at any age and usually begins with cold-like symptoms. And finally, the top United Nations humanitarian official for the Palestinian territory says successive Israeli evacuation orders in Gaza, including 12 just in August, have displaced 90% of its 2.1 million residents since the Israel-Hamas war began in October. Meanwhile, the International Rescue Committee also says the polio virus has been circulating in the territory for the first time in 25 years. This is the Canadian Press. In sports, the Toronto Argonauts edged out the Saskatchewan Rough Riders for a 20-19 home win on Thursday. Argos quarterback Chad Kelly played his first game of the season after being reinstated following a league suspension for violating its gender-based violence policy. Over to the Diamond now, where Ernie Clement homered for the first time in his last three games, and the Toronto Blue Jays used a five-run second inning to build an early lead and then ultimately beat the Los Angeles Angels 5-3. The Jays, who swept a three-game road series against the Angels last week, have won four straight meetings and eight out of ten. The Kansas City Chiefs and Creed Humphrey have agreed to a four-year, $72 million U.S. extension, which makes him the highest-paid center in NFL history. That's according to a person with knowledge of the deal who spoke with the Associated Press. And finally, in the WNBA, the New York Liberty upped their win streak to eight with a 79-71 victory over the Dallas Wings. From the Canadian Press, I'm Rob Westgate. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to follow and subscribe. For more of today's top stories, visit the Canadian Press News.ca.